Oi! lovelies and welcome to the October 2021 episode of the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. My name's Leslie, this is a podcast about knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, anything yarny and it's recorded on the south coast of England. Welcome if you're a new viewer or if you're returning, thank you for being here. Lovely to have you here. Uh, any comments, thoughts, questions, please do put them in the, the notes below, the comments box below. Uh, I do try to answer everyone, not always immediately, but within a day or two, I try to answer everyone's and I love to hear from you. So please feel free to say what you think. Hope everyone's well. Can't believe it's October already, but there we go. Time is moving on a pace as it were. I'm running a make-along this year, a year-long make-along, makes sense, uh, with the lovely Kelly Ann from the Yarn Tales by the Sea podcast, and it's an accessory make-along. So this is any accessory for the person, so any item that can be worn that's not a garment. The entry is via Ravelry. Now, if you are having difficulties using Ravelry for any reason at all, please email me your entry to notquiteenoughyarn at gmail.com and you'll be added to the thread. There are two threads in each group, so in Kellyanne's Yarn Tales by the Sea group and in my Not Quite Enough Yarn group. One is a chatter thread and that's say whatever you like i've picked out this yarn i've i'm halfway through this item i really like your sock you know whatever it is you want to comment just chatter away and um there's also a finished object thread and that's no chatter so by all means please put on there a comment of what the pattern is what the yarn is if it's a gift for you know any kind of narrative around the item but uh, people won't be able to respond so that's that's the main difference put finished objects into the chatter thread as well and people can respond so everyone's a winner you are very welcome to enter into both Kellyanne's group and mine and any other make-alongs that you're joining in with that are that mean you're making accessories that's my dog excuse me um, please feel free to post in theirs and if they're happy for you to multiple dip we certainly are so if you're doing one of the many sock alongs at the moment there are prizes drawn quarterly on the chatter thread it's a pattern prize and on the finished object thread it's a physical prize so yarn a bag something of that nature so please do join in and um Prizes can be sent anywhere in the world, as far as I'm concerned. It's not a Europe only or anything like that, because sadly I live in a country that feels the need to stand alone now, so all places are equally... <laughs> not getting into the politics. Yes, yeah, so those, that is the make-along, and that will finish at the end of this year, so do please get your entry in, or entries. There will also be a draw for the end of the year to cover all four quarters, and there'll be a prize then so yay i record throughout the month and put things together sort of vlog style but i wouldn't like to say it's as structured as that it's just kind of bits that are all put together and that are posted on the last weekend of the month anytime you see me wearing something hand knitted then i will put in the notes what that is so this is the elizabeth um, no this is the stillness sweater by elizabeth somebody that's why i put things in the notes oh dear and that will also have details of the yarn i've used and that sort of thing so so i think that's all the admin so on with stuff i've had a birthday this month i'm now 27 work with me people and I have been sent some lovely things. Now, I've been sent some lovely things and I've had a birthday. The two things have sometimes overlapped, have sometimes not overlapped. 
So first, a, a ball of yarn, which my friend got me because she knows I love in the Noro. So some Noro Silk Garden. Oh, look at these colours. So pretty. Yes, so love in the Noro. And I've also received this month from a couple of wonderful viewers two project bags and I am just so thrilled you folks are so lovely so this first one is from Raylene who is the crafty kiwi and I will put the link to her Facebook page in the notes below and she saw this and thought of me because it has drums for those of you who don't know um I am in a, a drumming group we're a sort of we're a rabble. See, if I say we're a marching drumming group, it makes it sound as if we're in formal uniforms with hats and what I describe as drumming. We're not that. We're more going to the pub drumming. But um, <laughs> but yes, we, we drum. And so Raylene saw this fabric and thought of me. So thank you so much. It's a beautiful bag, fully lined pockets, handle zip, all the things and just delighted so thank you and it's been an abundance of riches recently for me because a couple of days later i received in the post this lovely bag as well so this is from cat in canada thank you so much cat another beautifully made bag drawstring lined pocket and our drumming group has team colors for want of a better phrase of red and black So just what a beautiful thing. Thank you so much. I am very touched to receive these things. You are so, so lovely. Thank you. And as I am a sort of person that has many whips on the go, many bags are a good thing. So thank you. Really do appreciate it. One thing I forgot to say is why it's called the Not Quite Enough Yarn podcast. I'm about to demonstrate that with a finished object. Um... I clearly have lots of yarn, I have three cupboards worth, but I don't usually have enough for an entire garment in the same colour. So I put in a stripe or a block or some kind of pattern because I didn't have quite enough yarn to, yeah. So the not quite enough becomes a bit of a theme and sometimes I'll have not quite enough buttons so I'll do different colour buttons and that sort of thing. So so that's that's the not quite enough explained hopefully but i have finished something in multiple yarns <laughs> my niece had a baby last november and she has a car seat which will last until the baby's three i think and i know there are rules and regs around um what babies can wear when they're in car seats and coats aren't recommended i think there's a danger of getting them caught and that sort of thing so she had seen a, a picture of a blanket sold by the company that makes the car seat um, with holes for shoulder straps and the, the buckle part that the straps clip into that you then can wrap around the baby lovely warm and snuggly um, and she wondered if it was something I could do I was about to say there's nothing I can't do which is mostly wrong and incredibly arrogant but if it's something that can be made and can be crocheted I'll always give it a go sometimes you find you can't do things but you give it a go anyway so so we have a car seat blanket or I'm calling it a car seat cocoon because it is very snuggly so here it is in its entirety so you've got the hood here and this is the front and we've made it pretty big because baby is going to grow and the idea of this longer piece is that you tuck it up over the feet of the baby before you before you do it up so the piece looks odd when it's all laid out flat and it looks like a very sad face but you can see there I've got the two holes um, for the 
shoulder straps and for and this hole for the buckle i work this side to side and just worked straight and then added piece for the hood and the foot uh, flappy bit then worked the longer the, the wider piece if you, if you like as we were working sideways then reduced by the same amount kept working and I worked one side longer than the other so that there is room for it to fold over and then put in fasteners three rows of fasteners so that there's room for for growth or just there might be times when you want it a little looser sometimes you want to snuggle baby up tight other times you just want a loose covering so in theory and i will know tomorrow at time of recording if this fits in the car seat or not sits in the car seat strap the strap seatbelt bits come through baby is put in and then secured round her when I say secured, that sounds tight, but you know, wrapped around her to keep her nice and warm. Initially, I had talked about putting buttons in and several rows of buttonholes. And a friend of mine, thank you, Evelyn, uh, very rightly pointed out that um, if ever anyone needed to get to baby in a hurry, hopefully they never will. But you know, if you suddenly need to get to baby and lift, unclip the seatbelt and lift her out, uh, buttons could be fiddly. So I instead, I've used press studs, snap fasteners. Um, names vary according to geography so what do we have here if I work through it uh, in the order in which I made it so here's our starting piece and I wanted to just put a little bit of interest um, for how it looks but also for me making it so I made this I put in this swirl pattern And just put in general eight rows of normal uh, treble crochet that's the UK term so double crochet US between the blocks of the the swirl pattern when I got to the hood I worked a little longer and to make the hood I just worked the piece longer and sewed up the top seam so very simple and straightforward yeah so worked from this starting edge increased here put in the holes decreased again when I no longer needed the hood or the um, feet flap I'm sure there's a better word for that um, kept going and kept going and then the last swirl pattern I didn't do the second, the, the last row of it, so it just gave a nice pico edge. Comme ça. Then sewed on the press studs, so we've got three lots here of the female part, one lot here of the male. Bob's your uncle. It's taken me about four weeks to make, I think. Um, it's one of those things you think oh baby blanket they're quite small that won't take long but actually what you've got here is kind of a multiple of baby blankets because you've got the bits that fold over the hood you know so it's it's slight it's bigger than a, a usual baby blanket but I'm pleased with how it comes out I will be especially pleased with it if uh, it fits it should do I made a fabric template and tried it in the car seat so I could make sure that where I uh, my, my niece had measured straps and size for me and that sort of thing but um, I would made this temp fabric template to try it so this should fit and I will weep genuine tears if it doesn't I think because it really should but we shall see how it goes so it will keep little one very warm and very snugly so the yarn, bit of a mishmash. This was a bit of a not quite enough yarn project. So this main colour here is this yarn here. I had a couple of balls left over from this project, so they've gone into here. What I did was I looked for double knitting weight yarns that were machine washable that would go together well. Um, 
I quite like the brights. If something's purple and I'm running out of purple, I'll stick in some yellow and that's fine. But uh, my niece is a little more subtle in her colour choices. So I thought I would honour that in her. The sort of cream colour here, this is, uh, I had a few balls of Women's Institute, which is sold via Hobbycraft in the UK. Soft and silky four ply. Four ply my eye. Now in the UK, four ply is a weight of yarn. It, it's equivalent to fingering pretty much. This just felt so much thicker. And when I was working with it, I'd initially put it with another fine yarn to kind of make it up to double knitting weight. And it was coming far too thick. So I thought this is this is double knitting weight. I thought, well, maybe it means four ply as in made up of four plies. No, no, I think there are six. So I don't know what's gone wrong with that categorization, that labeling. I haven't done a wraps per inch. A friend of mine suggested I do that because actually it doesn't matter. It, it equated to a double knitting weight for this project. That's good enough. This purple here, this contrast color, is um, some double knitting weight crepe acrylic that I was um, given in a bundle of stash. This more variegated one is Serdar Click, which I was also given in a bundle of stash. Now, once we get to the hood and the main sort of long part, this was using two yarns together. Actually, most of these yarns have been given to me as parts of stash because I've been very fortunate. I don't buy yarn, haven't bought yarn really for a while. Had a bit of a COVID blip last year, but generally haven't bought yarn for a while. Been given lots and I'm very grateful. So this kind of main section here is some Serda Snuggly, which is a four ply, very soft acrylic yarn, held with some yarn, I don't know what it is, <laughs> It's fine boucle and it it goes between pale pink and pale yellow, which is why you get a slightly striped effect in here. So that's that. And I think they're all the different yarns. So yeah, worked sideways. Uh, when I got to the bits where I needed to do holes, then obviously I just worked the bit and joined it up again. So worked down there down there and then a row to join it up. What I found was that the holes for, for example, the um, straps were very baggy and saggy. So all I did was just a row of trebles along here, kind of working the other way, just to give it a little bit more structure. It doesn't really matter that they're baggy and saggy and it, it doesn't matter um, as long as the straps go through, that's what matters. But I just felt that they were a bit floppy and could do with just a little bit of holding together. So, so that's what we've done there. I think that's all I can tell you. All told, it was about 1900 meters of yarn. It was actually more than that because of the, the ones that were held double. But if you were just working straight DK, all the way through it's about 1900 so it is quite a heavy piece it's quite a thick piece but it's a cozy piece and I'm hoping that it it meets the requirement of the specification um, if anyone is interested I have put a schematic on my project page in Ravelry so you can see the dimensions that I made everything um, it was suggested kindly that someone said you know are you gonna write it up I think well no because I'm making this to fit a specific car seat and I don't know what the variations are like between the holes the spaces needed for the holes for the straps so I'm not writing it up as a pattern but the schematic is there with the overall sizes if that's helpful to anyone um, if they're interested in doing something similar and it, it gives the structure so it gives the idea if people want to to make it up. What I've also got on my Ravelry page is um, in the notes I've put the pattern for the swirl so if you wanted to use that pattern elsewhere or um, you wanted to put it into something like this the, the uh, stitch pattern for that is there. 
So that's an FO, which is already a much bigger FO than I had last month, because I think last month was uh, a pair of gloves. But it's not a competition, it's not a race. Sometimes you finish things, sometimes you keep working through, sometimes you go and do something else entirely to, to give your head a sort of creative boost elsewhere. So whatever you're doing, enjoy. Um, I will see you later in the month and I will let you know if this fitted or not. In fact, if I can get photographs of it in the seat, you'll know that already because they're the photographs I'll use. Cheers all. Hello lovelies. The blanket fits the car seat. Yay! I <laughs> forgot to take pictures, but the blanket fits. Yay! I'm happy now. Hello lovely people. I had an email uh, a few weeks ago from a company asking if I wanted to review a lamp and they would send me the lamp and I would review it on my channel. I thought it was a scam. These things don't happen to me. Uh, but then I remembered that Ellie of Skane Deer Knits had reviewed the same lamp. So I realised it was genuine. Then I had this whole, do I want a lamp? Do I need a lamp? These are two different questions. And um, I decided to, to go for it. So to give full disclosure up front, this lamp has been given to me. And when you see the price point, which is kind of 150 quid, 180 dollars. This is a, a serious lamp. So I'm making it clear and out there that this has been given to me. People have sent me a lamp. They haven't bought my mind or my opinions, but they have sent me a lamp. So I wanted to make it clear that that's why I'm talking about this. So let's get it out of the box. Now it arrived a few days ago, and at that point we were having problems with our electrics in the house. I thought, I'm not touching this until I know the electrics are all okay. <laughs> Don't want to blow up the new lamp. I'm funny like that. So as it's been here a few days, I'm already using the box as a table because this is what I do. So I'm going to stop using the box as a table and I'm going to open the box to reveal the lamp. Bye bye. assembly element to this. It's never a good noise, is it? This is why we don't have nice things, but we, we appear to have a very nice thing here. So I'm going to read what my family would always call the destruction manual and put this together. this in lots of bits because ideally I'd like to demonstrate this lamp once it's dark and it's not quite yet. I will be comparing this lamp, this new very funky looking lamp, I mean funky in a good way in case there are any cultural references there, um, compared to the lamp that I normally use which is an IKEA standard lamp with a reading attachment. 
that means that there will be lights going on and off so obviously if that's something that you're sensitive to and it's going to cause you any difficulties i'll put a time on the screen here where you can skip forward to if you're worried about how the the light will affect you i hope that makes sense cheers Okay, lovely. so the room currently is only lit by my IKEA standard lamp behind me. I've turned off the overhead light, did a bit of rearranging of furniture, um, to put a, a table here. I was hoping this would go on my bookshelf next to my chair, but that then makes it too high for me to just be able to reach up and turn it off. So I've put a little table here, which is the right kind of height for that. So I brought it over so I can show you its functions. So assembly has took five minutes, that was straightforward. To turn on and off, just it's a touch on that ring there. I'm not excited by that, I'll be perfectly honest. Um, now I can appreciate for some people that's perhaps easier than some kind of button or switch. It doesn't require any dexterity, just requires a touch. So it may be designed with, with people for whom that would be easier in mind, in which case I'm all for it. Uh, personally speaking, I would be happier if that switch was on the base, just that would make it easier. And whether it's a, a desk lamp or wherever you have it, that I would prefer. This was originally a desk lamp. It is the, I should have told you this, the Genie e-reading lamp from BenQ. Now, like I say, personally, I prefer the controls to be on the base because that's normally where I can reach. But in this case, they've put it there. That's fine. Next to the on-off ring, you have this dial. And this serves two functions. So if we switch it on, you can turn up the brightness and you can also do the temperature. Now I've got it set to temperature at the moment, so this is quite a, a yellow light. And you can turn it to a much cooler, a sort of bluer light. So you can see warmer, cooler, depending on your requirements. And the idea behind this is that you can use it well with screens, you can use it well with books and printed materials, so whatever. Um, I didn't mean that whatever to sound dismissive. So it's for whichever you use. Now, thank you have got in touch with crafters and they gave me this lovely spiel about how it's important to have good light when you're crafting. Yeah, I know. Fine. So you can turn it cooler, warmer. Pressing this button, you can then make it brighter or duller. So two functions there. Now, when this is on there and I'm reaching up for it, to me the obvious danger is that this button being so close to this, I'm gonna be doing something with this button and just touch that by mistake. So I can see that as potentially annoying, but it's okay. So to go back to a, a warmer light, that warmer. Oh, there we go. I'm going to put this lamp up now and we can do a quick compare and contrast as to just how much light it throws out, bearing in mind this isn't adaptable. So if I turn off my standard lamp, wrong switch, there we go. So this is the lamp I have, this is the light I have from the BenQ. Now it is adjustable in terms of position, it's adjustable in terms of colour, it's adjustable in terms of the amount, so I'm turning it down there, I can turn it up. From a crafting or reading point of view, it works really well. From a lighting the room point of view, not so good, and let me demonstrate that. So if I turn that one off, we're going to go dark. And so we can see the standard lamp lights the room more effectively, which is kind of what it's designed to do. There's no criticism of the BenQ, it's no praise of the IKEA or anything either way around. 
it's a standard lamp it's higher it's got an up lighter on it so it's going to throw more light into the room it just happens to be a very bright light which is why it's always worked for me as a crafting tool i quite like to have the light kind of behind me or to my side i don't want the light coming in at this angle at me because as soon as i look up i'll be staring into bright lights so so that's where we're at with that um There's a list of things I'm supposed to tell you about it. I wish I could remember what they were. What I will do is put in the links below um, the Amazon link if you're interested in it, the BenQ link and any other spec about it. So it's, it's a very solid base actually. It's very, um, it feels secure. Design wise, you're either going to like it or you don't. I mean, we live in a 1924 house. I'm not sure that a 1924 house needs a lamp of this kind of design. But I knew what it would look like when um, when I said yes, please. So it hasn't come as a surprise. I think it's available in a couple of different colours, but nothing, um, nothing too kind of weird and wacky, I think. They're all sort of fairly neutral shades. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure really what else I can say about it. It's a lamp. It's very effective. It is very bright. And it's got, I think it's 140 something LEDs in here. So it is a very bright light, as you can see. The fact that it's adjustable is good. Um, when I'm sitting here, himself is normally in the chair opposite. He might get a little bit um, startled by <laughs> bright lights from me. And I do like the fact that you can change the temperature. Oh, that's brightness, hang on. So you can have this warmer glow. And depending on what you're working on, or what you're doing, that could be useful. So if I were sitting here reading, for example, the warmer light would be good. But if it's something that I need a lot of detail, then the brighter light, the cooler light, feels whiter, it feels as if what I'm looking at, differentiation between colour, that sort of thing, feels more like a daylight lamp. And this, I have a daylight lamp on my desk upstairs, and this feels more like that quality of light. It gives you all instructions of how to set it up over a desk, um, and I can imagine it as a desk lamp, absolutely wonderful, which is what it was originally designed as. It throws out a lot of light. It gives you, I think, good quality of light to see something close work, small, you know, intricate work. I can see the advantage. Would I buy one? It's more than I would normally spend on a lamp, I'll be perfectly honest. And funky as it is, I'm not sure that I would have rushed out to buy one if I hadn't been offered one. I like it. And this is about how I choose to spend my money. And we all know I love a gadget, so it's not that I'm anti anything new, but um, I don't know that I would spend kind of 150 quid, 180 dollars on, on a new lamp because the Ikea one behind me, I've had a lot of years but I think it cost me about £20 and has lasted a long time. Now, nothing to suggest that this won't last a long time either, but I don't know that I would buy one. Having said that, I'm very grateful to BenQ for sending it to me. I like it. I was debating what I was going to do, and I'm kind of still debating because I was talking to himself about the lamp once we decided, once I decided that, yes, please, I would take you know take up the offer and there is another place that the standard lamp can go in an opposite corner of the room if I want this as my working lamp so I think the reality is I've just got to try it for a few days see what it's like for my crafting and then go from there so this is me fulfilling my obligations thank you very much BenQ for sending the lamp and 
these are my thoughts on it but I will before the end of the month just let you know if I have decided to keep it here in my crafting corner or if I've decided to put it elsewhere in the house because I prefer my standard lamp. All I can do is be honest, Governor. Cheers. Hello, lovelies. How are we? Hope we're well. I have a finished object to show you, and it's one that vlog viewers won't have seen because it's for my mate Mandy, and she might have seen it on the vlog before I had the chance to give it to her. So what we have here, it's a biggish gift. I hope she likes it. I hope she wants it. We were having a conversation about how it was getting chilly. I still make you a blanket. And she didn't take the mickey, which she normally does when I offer to make her something. We normally end up having quite ridiculous conversations. So I thought, oh, maybe she does want one. So I got the whirly whirly machine out, my Addy King Size Express, and I made this chap here. I'm going to hide behind it for a moment to try and give you a sense of the full expanse. So it's about 50 something inches square ish and was made on the Addy Express. I had some yarn when my sister acquired a dustbin bag full of yarn. There were five or six balls of the same yarn, which was Hayfield DK with wool. So I think it's something like 80% acrylic, 20% wool. There's a Starcraft yarn. I think it's of a similar sort of construction. It's got a nice feel to it and I had five or six balls of this all different colours but I thought I would quite like to use them together in a project um because I so rarely do because <laughs> I normally have different brands of yarn and different things and I didn't have enough for a sweater of course and I couldn't quite work out what to make with them and then when this blanket idea came along I thought well here we have the perfect yarns because it's still machine washable but it has some more content for a bit more warmth so the Hayfield yarns were this green here um, this cream colour this blue this red and the black so I am put some other yarns with it, so we've got a bit of blue here, we've got a couple of a different cream, we've got a sort of mauvey colour here, and I also had a full ball of James C. Brett Top Value DK, which is 100% acrylic yarn, acrylic yarn, and that's this red, so it's slightly lighter, if I put the two together you can see slight difference in colour. But what can I tell you? Um, I made five tubes with the colours and I did 260 rounds. Now on the Addy Express you don't have a huge amount of control over gauge. You can alter it slightly by pulling the yarn a little tighter but there isn't a huge amount of flex there and if you're making a tube they're all the same size. So I made seven tubes with the colours and they're 260 rows long. So I did 10 in black at the at the bottom. Now, as well as the Hayfield black, I had some Jaeger Matchmaker, which I've used in this. Um, so 10 black, 40 rows of each colour, and then 10 at the top, 260 rows in total. Ended up with five strips with colour, and I did two strips, one for each end in plain black. Now, if I had a 22 stitch machine, I would probably have done these end panels in that so that it would be narrower and match the the strip at the top. But I don't, so I didn't, and there we go. And anyway, this makes it a bigger blanket. My mate Mand likes to read, she likes to watch a bit of TV, so I'm hoping this will be cosy on chilly days to, to put over her while she's doing those activities. Uh, what else can I say about it? Yes, yeah, so I made the tubes, mattress stitched them together, and there we go. And these tubes, they look really kind of scruffy and horrible, and it doesn't look like it's going to come to anything coherent. 
until they're all sewn together. The tubes at the bottom and top are closed using crochet. I'll put a link to the tutorial video. Uh, it's a 25 minute long video, um, but it's how I learned to do this. I have done similar things before, so if you've looked at it before, it's the same one. But yes, so I have a warm and cosy blanket. In terms of yarn usage, so I had uh, one, two, three, four, however many I had of the Hayfield. I had the Jaeger matchmaker and then I had various bits of um, double knitting. I realised there's a pink one that I didn't point out. And in total, I used 2,345 metres of yarn. And the beauty of these, because you make it out of a tube, a, a series of tubes and sew them together, you've got a double thickness blanket. So same both sides because you've joined tubes together, you've got the whole thing. It also means you don't have to worry too much about ends because they just hide in the tubes. I know some people don't like mattress stitch, but I find it, especially on these, fairly straightforward because you just keep going, you know. I'll I don't have a problem with it at all. If I could do my mattress stitch on sweaters as neatly as I could do it on these tubes, I would be more contented with my skills in that area. So yes, an FO, a fair amount of yarn used. As I say, I hope that my mate man uh, wants this, likes this, um, has use of it. If she really doesn't want it, then, you know, we are old friends, I'll have it back and someone else will have it, that's not a problem. Uh, but I hope she likes it and that it is a cosy thing for her. People keep telling me we're going to have a really harsh winter. We may or we may not. But either way, hopefully this will be uh, a something cosy. A little hug from me when I'm not there to hug her. She would rather I wasn't there to hug her, she'd rather be hugged by the blanket, pretty sure of that. We're the sort of friends where we mostly insult, insult each other. Works for us. Hello lovelies, how are we? Uh, this is my crochet version of the Boxy by Hohilo Catelli and it's in yarns from Stranded Dye Works, Chids Pie Knits and The Knitting Goddess. There we go. Oh, I remembered. One thing I forgot to say the other day when I was showing you the blanket for my mate Mand is I used the leftovers and made a hat also on the circular sock machine. I've been making hats throughout the year to give to a charity which looks after homeless people. So this will go in that pile. And I really must get that to them soon as it's starting to get chillier. But um, very simple structure. You just knit a long tube cinch in both ends. Now in this case I had a bit of a problem when I changed colour I had some slipped stitches uh, so I decided to let them run all the way up and down and then with a the large crochet hook I think I did two or three rows at a time just basically made a, a chain of the um, the stitches so it gives you a kind of mock cable effect. So this will go in the bundle, which will soon go to the charity. I really must get on to that. Now I'll be making other things. And I have another blanket here, a much smaller one. And this is a crochet baby blanket. The pattern is Spin Me Around by Catherine Bly and it's a pattern where you just you start and then you go as big as you want to. I um, was watching Aquila from the Lefty Knitter a few weeks ago and she'd made a baby blanket and she said that about three feet diameter which this is roughly is a good size um, it's a good size for baby tucking into push chairs and prams good size for when baby is laying on the floor tummy time wriggling around 
and then a good size for baby to use to tuck in baby's own toys when baby grows up a bit so I took that advice and I made this about three feet diameter bit of a mixture of yarns on here um, a lot of inherited bits of stash so there's a, a kind of mottled green into blue I don't know what all of these are uh, there was a white which has slightly yellowy patches it's not showing up it's a slight variegation white and yellow but it does look a little bit as if it's tea stained well we're going to go with tea anyway <laughs> also in here there is some sparkly yarn I don't know that the sparkles will show up this graduated one here is Mandala Sparkle which I think is Lion brand that was left over from some other projects um, so yes I just worked the blanket until it was the size that I wanted and then did a crab stitch binding um, edging rather so that's just double crochet UK terms but working anti-clockwise instead of clockwise obviously I'm right-handed so I go normally clockwise in a circle but it just gives that nice kind of slightly nubbled edge there not sure nubbled is a word but it is now so yeah I'm quite pleased with that I ran out a bit of the mandala so I put a something else in there the right sort of color but this was mostly um, acrylic or similar from the stash certainly all machine washable um, as I've said before I don't give the gift of hand washing to new mothers so so that's that happy with that um, now I've also I'm piling up everything in the wrong place finished some socks which is unusual for me because I don't make a lot of socks though the reason why I wanted to finish these is because I have another pair on the go so these are the socks that I showed in works in progress a month or two ago and I had made the tubes on my flatbed um, knitting machine so the big beast and then I put in heels toes I would say cuffs but um, I'm doing them as, as just rolling over cuffs the toes I just did a fairly standard decrease each side the heels I was struggling to find one that I liked that was then an afterthought heel if I'm making socks and I'm knitting all of them by hand then I'll often do a heel flap and gusset but um, I wanted an afterthought heel because I'd made the tubes and it was suggested that I try the umbrella heel which is from K of the Bakery Bears so I bought the pattern and yeah I quite like it so it's um the the reason why I wasn't happy with the other heels is I didn't like the big kind of line up the middle you get from the double decrease if you make it in the same way as you do your toes and just I don't know why I just took against it whereas the the umbrella heel is more of a circular structure so yeah I'm quite happy with how, that, how that's turned out uh, I got myself some actual sock blockers as you can see and I got these from the Twisted Sheep on Etsy and the reason why I went for them is that they do sock blockers per shoe size and I have very large feet so I knew that this would be the right size blockers now the only downside of these is that they don't have a hook on them already obviously you can attach something to them but I am nothing if not resourceful often I am nothing but I am nothing if not resourceful so after I'd soaked these socks I found a way of hanging them <laughs> So I must try and find one of these skirt and trouser hangers that has a slidable peg so that um, I can have them closer together rather than this hello gap in the middle. But uh, yes, so these are the socks. I'm pleased with how they've turned out. Uh, the yarn, let me put that down, is Katia Ole New Duetto. Seventy five per cent superwash wool, twenty five per cent nylon, um, four hundred and twenty meters per hundred grams. 
I used 60 grams, so that's about 250 meters, I think, in those socks. They're shorties, as you saw, so I've got a fair bit left over. Not sure what I'll do with these. I mean, could always be contrast heels and toes for something else. We shall see. So those are the current finished objects. And I have a couple of things to show you, which are rather lovely. The first, this isn't yarn, and the point has been made. This doesn't break the no buy of yarn because it's not yarn. Um, actually, it doesn't buy the no buy of yarn because I didn't buy it, but I'm very grateful to the person who did. You may remember last year, uh, last month, I finished a sweater which had been started by a friend who's sadly no longer with us and sent it to her daughter. Her daughter lives in Canada and was at a yarn show and saw this fibre and felt that it was calling my name. Now I can't think at all why someone might feel these colours would be my colours. <laughs> No, so thank you, Claire. These are beautiful. These are both Okanagan, Okanagan. I don't know how it's pronounced, forgive me. Uh, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to go with Okanagan Dye Works. Uh, hand dyed in the Okanagan. So if I'm mispronouncing that location, I'm really sorry. Um, they are both 100% untreated 22 micron. Uh, sorry, 22 micron merino roving and it says weight of 115 to 125 grams. Doesn't give colour names on these but I'm going to call them beautiful and gorgeous. So, you know, that's if they're looking for suggestions, I'm your person. So yes, absolutely stunning colours and how pretty. Thank you, Claire. They are just gorgeous. So what will I do with these? Well, obviously I'll spin them. Um, <laughs> They might be a good opportunity for me to try chain plying once more. Uh, it's something I've tried, not been terribly successful, so I wouldn't necessarily go straight in with these because they're too pretty to, to mess up. But um, the reason why I'm thinking chain plying is that then you'll have the concentration of colour rather than have it, um, you know, two plies together of two different colours or three together of different colours. So that's what I'm thinking at this stage, but they need to kind of marinate for a moment, I think. But aren't they pretty? I'm a very lucky girl. I have been a very lucky girl this month, actually. I'm very grateful to everyone who sent me stuff because I've also been given some patterns. So thank you to the people who sent me patterns, um, birthday gifts or what have you. That is so very, very kind. Um, my flabber is ghasted, my over is whelmed, or my whelmed is over. I digress. <laughs> Talking of pattern, there's a new magazine called Morit. Let me show you, Morit. Now I knew this was in production because there'd been a Kickstarter campaign um, to which I'd, I'd made a very small contribution. And it's now here and it's a thing of beauty and wonder. It's a lovely magazine, um, feels nice quality paper and that sort of thing. And I know these things are superficial, but they, they give a sense of the care, if you see what I mean. But crochet patterns predominantly. There is an embroidery pattern in here as well, but designed as a, a crochet magazine. So we have the one that's on the front, which I like but um, the sleeves far too big for me and the whole thing is bulky I think and bulky crochet for me personally wouldn't work but I can appreciate the beauty of it but there are a couple of sweaters in here that I really do like very much so we've got this one and this is made using um, holding four ply and mohair together and I'm also very fond of this one so yes I could see that in my future very good on size inclusivity um, and in fact before I 
uh, contributed to the Kickstarter, I contacted them and said, what's your size inclusivity going to be like, people? And they said, yeah, pretty good, and gave me the size range. Now, for example, this one on the front, which is called Cumulo, by Liliana, I'm going to butcher this name, Bus Jamelko. I hope I've pronounced that somewhere near uh, as it should be. But this is bust circumference 30 inches to 67 and three quarter inches. So there is a good size. It just is designed for a loose fit. It doesn't tell you um, how loose, doesn't tell you how much uh, ease, but realistically, if you're making patterns which are beyond the normal basic, there's a good chance that you know roughly how much ease you'd be looking for. So um, there are also socks in here. There's a skirt. There's a, a woolly sheep. So lots of good stuff. There's an article on fit. Um, so yeah, so far I'm impressed and I certainly wish them every success and we'll be keeping an eye out for future editions. Um, yeah, don't know what else to say about that, but it's got some lovely things. They do have a website and also if you're a Ravelry user you can look to see what the patterns are so you can have a look and see you know what they've got um, before you make the commitment but from my point of view I'm very pleased to have bought it and it's a bit like um, the way I feel about Pom Pom magazine that beautiful patterns which one day I'll make they're on my kind of fantasy to-do list <laughs> Um, but even if I never make them, I really have enjoyed looking at this and will enjoy looking at it again. So it has joys beyond the uh, patterns include, involve, inside. Oh, words, English, sentence, construction, all up the swanee today, obviously. Yes, I think that's it for the moment. Um, I'm working on another pair of socks, which I, I'll, I'm test knitting and i have one done but it's not blocked and uh, i'm kind of third of the way through the other so hopefully i'll get it done before month end and be able to show you the pair i've been doing some spinning which again i i hope to show you before the end of the month i didn't spin for a while i had some problems with my calf and i had some stuff coming up that i really didn't want a bad leg for so i avoided the wheel in case this motion with my feet, which I hope it's more even on my feet, um, was was aggravating the concern on my leg. But I'm back on the spinning and touch wood, so far so good. Um, but I didn't want to make worse a problem. So yes, I shall be back later in the month with more stuff. Hello lovelies. Final stretch chaps. Lamp update. I've contacted the manufacturer and said would you like it back because it's really not working for me. It just isn't the right thing for my space. Talking of lamps, sorry about that, that's my studio lamp reflecting in glass. And yeah, Sorry, hope it's not causing you a problem. Um, nothing wrong with the, the lamp that I was offered and have been using. Uh, if I was using it on a desk I'm sure it would be great, but I'm not using it on a desk. I'm using it in my armchair. So not the right thing for me in my particular space, but the details are all in the notes below, should you think it might be of interest to you. And I'm very grateful to them for the opportunity. Yeah, that's never a good thing to say. So, <laughs> so with that, I'll be sticking to my IKEA 20 quid, 20 years old standard lamp. But, um, Another update, I haven't done any spinning. Said I might, haven't, sorry. But I do have another FO. I have some socks. These are the Five Winds socks. I was doing a test knit for the designer Carol. And I modified it. And I'm not sure you should do that with a test knit. I hope it's okay, Carol. But I have put down what my modifications are. Um, Carol is raising money for her daughter's horse rescue ranch, the Five, Win Five Winds Ranch. And she's this is the first of a few patterns she's going to be putting together this year um, to raise money for the feed for the horses. I um, 
I will put the link down below to the pattern and also to the Kofi page, coffee page, I'm never sure, um, to show, uh, you know, should, should that be of interest to you. So the normal pattern for this, I'll put a picture up. It's a 64 stitch sock and it normally has a tighter cuff. So it has a rib and this pattern here, this little hearts pattern, Yeah, the little hearts pattern is um, in a smaller needle size because being a lace it it's looser. I was already doing these on a two millimeter needle. I know that a 72 stitch sock on a two millimeter needle fits me. So I adapted the pattern slightly to add the extra stitches and because I was using my two mil I didn't have a smaller one for the lace pattern. But because I wanted a slouchy sock, that is fine. I'd already said to Carol that I was going to do not a ribbed cuff, just a, a stocking stitch and cast off so it rolls over. And I've got the slouchier piece here with the little heart. So there it is, the Five Winds sock pattern. Um, I'm not a particularly experienced sock knitter, but I got on fine with it. She gives good instructions for... Um, you know, when to change the yarns, what you need to do. I particularly like the little kind of chain effect, which we've got around the toe as well, uh, which is a, um, a nice little pattern there. So yes, that is my test knit, which I altered. I hope that's okay. All the links are below. It's a $5 pattern. I think that might be five Canadian. And like I say, all money is being raised for horses that need help. And we like animals. Good luck with the pattern, Carol. Thank you for asking me to test it. Privilege to do. And yeah, very happy. Should tell you about the yarn, shouldn't I? This is Berger de France in the Luberon base, which is 65% wool, 35% acrylic-y, poly -y sort of stuff, um, in the Gru colourway and the Cher colourway. Uh, that's spelt like chair, as in the chair you sit on, and Gru, G-R-U-E. These are both yarns that I've been given as part of various stashes so I don't know if the yarn is still available but uh, I think they go together pretty nicely and I had enough to do both in the same configuration because I was saying last month that after I'd done the first sock I would weigh the yarn see how much I had left and if need be the second sock would be pink with grey contrasts but I had enough what else have we got? Lamp update. Five wind socks. But first some big news. Well it is for me. And in one sense these things don't mean anything. But in another sense they really do. Because today I have hit 5,000 subscribers. That's 5,000 subscribers. Thank you. I don't know what else to say except thank you. <laughs> Just I am blown away by this. I absolutely am. Thank you so much for for being here, for those of you who comment, for those of you who don't. I still like you being here. Thank you. And just, I, I am rarely short of words and I'm clearly not short of them now because I am continuing to speak. But I am just so very grateful. Thank you so much to everyone who's a subscriber, who hits the buttons. Um, just thank you. <laughs> what? There are no other words. Well, the only other words are, do you fancy a 5k giveaway? Shall we? Go on then. I have been given prizes to give away this year, as we know. So massive thanks again to the lovely person who has donated these prizes. So for a 5k giveaway, the prize will be this bag which says, you can probably read it, but it says yarn tarts can have their cake and knit it 
and there's also some yarn this is Whistlebear Cuthbert sock in the storm warning colorway that's looking a little more pink there's there are a lot of colours in this, so we've got pink, we've got purple, we've got grey, we've got yellow, we've got orange. It's rather lovely. And Cuthbert Sock, it's 300 metres and it's 80% Whistlebear's own mohair and 20% Whistlebear's own Wensleydale wool, no nylon. So no pong, they say. Ha! They haven't met my husband, but <laughs> lovely pair of, a lovely pair of socks could be made out of this and a lovely bag in which to keep your project while you're making it. So I really should have put more thought into this, but it's all very kind of breaking news. So I think I'm going to make it really easy. If you're interested in that prize and you would like to take part, all you need to do is in the comments below, don't use the word giveaway, but if you can just use 5k, so the number 5, the letter k. There we go. If you could put that in a comment below, then I'll use some kind of whizzy bang fancy, isn't this clever, comment picker and draw a winner. So that's comments on this podcast only. So if you normally comment on the blog, vlog, don't um, put the 5k on there, it won't be eligible, it's only on this particular episode. But good luck and thank you. Just amazing, thank you so much, that's so kind, really lovely. Ah. So we're coming towards the end of the month, end of October. I'm drumming this weekend, bonfire season in this part of the world. People setting light to things. Mm. Um, yeah, so that, that should be good fun. And then it's kind of, it's beginning to feel a bit like Christmassy type stuff is happening. And if any of the items that you're making as gifts are accessories, please do enter them into the mail. Uh, I know that Jude of the Stranded Dye Works has the festive suck along, which I think is happening on instagram this year so if you're taking part in that by all means enter into our make along as well any accessories you're making this is the perfect opportunity i've been thinking about the make alongs and next year i will be doing make alongs but i probably won't be doing a year long one i've done year long make alongs for three years and i just want to change things up a bit and do perhaps shorter time scale ones next year so there will be make-alongs there will be opportunities for prizes but um it won't be a year-long one so that's that's next year but this year get in there people get your entries in and see what you can win lovely don't know why i'm doing that voice but there we go probably because it's friday and i'm getting super excited and i've got five thousand subscribers so, sensible face. I think that's a bit everything. I've actually had quite a uh, productive month. Uh, after last month not having many finished objects, I've made up for that this month, I think. Not that it's a race, not that it's a competition, but it feels as if I've finished quite a few things. Um, I am not going to do a roundup of whips for two reasons. Firstly, I think this episode is going to be long enough without that. And secondly, I haven't really made... A lot of progress on the ongoing rip whips I've kind of been focusing in on the things that you've seen as finished objects so that's that's the reason for that what does November bring rain normally around here rain and bonfires so a lot of steam hmm. no nothing uh, no trips planned or anything like that odds and ends which well you'll see in the the vlog if you watch that and hopefully crafting to show you next month so yes to remind you um accessory mail finished objects in the finished object thread on ravelry or email me not quite enough yarn at gmail.com comments please use the comment thread on ravelry for the chance to win a pattern and the 5k make along 5k subscriber 
not a make along. The 5k subscriber giveaway. In a comment below this podcast, please somewhere in your comment include 5k. And then I'll draw that next month. It's all rather exciting for me. I'm getting a little bit giddy. So now is probably a good time to go. <laughs> I hope you're all okay. Uh, we're still living in strange times. I know in some places in the world things are still quite restricted. In other places they've opened up. But people are beginning to think maybe they've opened up a bit too far. I'm not a virologist. I don't know. But I hope that you are all feeling safe and well and looking after yourselves and able to do the things you want to do and just keeping happy i hope you can be as happy as possible so, so i will see you at the end of november oh by the 25th of, Ma of november for the comments below so thank you um yeah so i'll see you at the end of november for the month end podcast I'll see you next Friday for the next next vlog. And just a massive thank you for being here. Keep well, keep happy, keep crafting, look after yourselves and take care. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.